Thank you very much for everybody gathering for this very important brainstorming. And uh, apologies for my uh, very tight schedule between uh, the UN and here, so I'm going to have to run immediately uh, after my remarks. I want to say something very uh, uh, direct to the education community, uh, including all the organizations we just heard. We're failing. The kids are not finishing school. They're not learning adequately. They're not even in school. If you look at low-income countries, maybe it's one-fourth of the secondary school completion. And maybe for lower secondary, maybe 40%. This is a disaster. It's unbelievable to me. I've been involved with the MDGs and the SDGs now for 23 years. The education sector has been underinvested during the entire period. And the leaders of the education sector are so nice because they're teachers, they work with children, they don't know how to raise their voice and tell the truth. Global Partnership for Education gets, what, $800 million a year? And it should be $20 billion a year. So I regard it not even as helpful. I'm sorry to say because people think they're doing something when they're not. I don't mean the Global Partnership. I mean the donors. They get to check a box. Yes, we've given to education. You have to run some numbers. It's basically an Excel spreadsheet. And let me just point out very simply, poor countries are young countries. They typically have had in recent years high fertility rates. That means that the school age population as a share of the total population is very high. Maybe three times what it is in a high income country. And the number of well-educated people is very low. So the cost of education per student measured as a ratio to GDP per capita is extremely high in low-income countries. So when I do the spreadsheet, you need 10 to 20% of GDP for education to cover your children. Maybe 4 or 5% in a rich country but maybe 15 to 20% in a poor country. I could show you that in five minutes. And I could show you there's not one low-income country in the world that can afford SDG4 right now, period. It's basic. So you can tell them all the wonderful things. You can get all the presidents to commit to it. The kids will not be in school. They will not have qualified teachers. There will not be water. There will not be hygiene in the school. They will not learn. They will not even be in the school. There will not be materials. It's dollars and cents. That's what it is. So come on, let's tell the truth to these heads of state coming tomorrow. And I mean the rich ones, not the poor ones. The poor ones, the Heads of poor countries know this. We are not going to do this without a massive increase of financing. Let's stop faking it. Sheikha Moses exactly right. Education above all. I can tell you it's the most important investment from every point of view for a society. There's nothing more important, not even water and sanitation and electricity. If you're not having the children in school, forget it. There's no hope for your society in the 21st century. And there's no budget for it. If you look at the 
Delhi Declaration that was just completed last week for the G20, it's quite telling, I want to say, to the leaders of the education community. Because it's a very good outcome document in general. I think uh, brilliant leadership by Prime Minister Modi. And it's got finance all over the place for climate, and it's got finance for infrastructure, and it's got finance for transport corridors, and it's got finance for health. Look at the section on education. It doesn't even mention finance. Shame. You're not even on the agenda. I mean it seriously. This is the most important investment. And I can tell you about the rich countries. They don't care, okay? If you had any doubt. I come from one. I've been doing this for decades. They don't give a damn, okay? But they need to have responsibility. I don't care whether they care or not. They need responsibility. They don't have it right now. So we need to say, what we need for SDG4 is at least $50 billion a year. Don't even consider something less. By the way, I don't even mind if it comes in loans, I have to tell you. As long as it's 40-year loans, because the return on education takes 40 years to realize. You have to put the kids through school. Then they have to join the labor market. Then they have to have some experience then the payoff to society is unbelievably high. So don't take a five-year loan for a 40-year return. But I can tell you, economically and financially, the return is about the highest return you can find. Higher than Tesla, higher than AI, higher than the tech companies. Educating a child, I mean in a dollars and cents terms, of what skills you get, what marginal productivity of labor you get, what investments you get. There is no higher return than to put the five-year-old in school, help her go all the way through upper secondary, help her achieve all her potential, and then she will find her way. So will he. But that's an investment that requires 20 years and then 20 years to reap the return. So don't expect this on a five-year euro bond. But this is what our multilateral agency should be doing. And the Global Partnership for Education, frankly, either raise at least 10 billion a year or make clear that you're not really accomplishing a partnership for education, seriously. I'm not a critic of GPE. I'm a critic of it serving as a placeholder. Because I watch these heads of state come and say, we did it. We did a replenishment round, which I know is a death sentence for students all over the world because they won't be in a classroom. So we absolutely have to get real on this. I'm a loudmouth, publicly obnoxious, privately a nice guy. And I want to advocate for this, and I've said this for 20 years. I came up with the idea of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria with Kofi. We championed it. We raised a lot of money. I will do the same for education, I promise you. But, but come on, where's our $50 billion a year call? It's not even on the agenda right now. Where are all these multilateral development banks? I promise you, I know every president of every one of them I've trained their senior staff over the last 40 years. We can get this done. But we need the education community to stand up and say, don't ask us to do this without teachers, without facilities, without connectivity, without devices, without water, electricity.
come on. Let's get real. We will need and we can have a lot of innovation along the way. I love Globe from Home. Where, thank you. Wonderful. 15 years, by the way, the first video conference I ever did just to show you, A, how old I am, and B, what kind of world we have, how much it we're advancing. The first time I ever had a video conference was in 1996, where I asked the then finance minister of India, Minister Chindambaran, to have a conference with us at Harvard. And he agreed, and we contacted VSNL and AT&T. It only took three weeks and lots of, I don't know, 10,000 bucks to wire the hotel facility. And then we had a miracle that the finance minister was on a screen and we talked live to him. It was a world changer for me. I could barely believe it. He said, if we can connect this way, oh my God. 12 years later, I developed something at Columbia we called the Global Classroom. And the idea was to connect campuses around the world to get together online. That was 15 years ago in 2008. And all we had to do was hire a full-time operator who would make the calls into each of the campuses and then manage the discussion in the chat room and so on. So the cost had come down probably a hundredfold from or a thousandfold from the event with Mr. Chindamran. Now, my life is nothing but Zooms. This is probably the first occasion that I see real human beings in a long time. It's free. We can connect the world. We can connect students, exactly what you're saying. We can reach students that are otherwise without a school nearby. All we need, deal with the telecoms. Go to Reliance, get uh, some uh, low-cost geos in their hands. Ask any of the tech companies in the telecoms. Don't expect the students to be online without data and without a device. And don't expect them not to lose the device, by the way, or break it the third day. So have a little resources in this. Get Apple to put something in. Get Google to put something in. Get Reliance to put something in. Get Bartiertel to put something in. We just need to ask them, but at scale, not as another pilot project. No more pilots. We will learn along the way, of course. Education is never done learning. My pedagogy, what I, how I teach and interact, of course, is completely different from 40 years ago. By the way, for the first 30 years, it seemed exactly the same. And now everything changes every minute because we can do so many creative things right now that's unbelievable. But we need connectivity, devices, hardware, a plan, local languages, a budget. And my whole career has been dealing with finance ministers that don't have money. And I beg for a living or complain for a living. And once in a while, something good happens. I complained for years that Africa needed to be in the G20 to be the 21st member. It happened this time. I had so many conversations around the world. Let's not miss the chance. Now, Africa's in the front table. Africa's the biggest education crisis in the whole world. I'm going to the UN just now to talk to African leaders. Don't miss this opportunity. You're at the front table. Make your clear calls. So I'm begging all of my favorite organizations. Honestly, I spend all my time trying to support you guys. But I cannot support you if you're not leading with the call for reality. The reality is every kid needs to be in school. That's what we pledged. That's only sanity. What's a kid going to do 
without an upper secondary education in the 21st century. Suffer, be in impoverishment, drown in the Mediterranean, God knows what. What are they going to do if they have a good education? Everything possible, because it's a wonderful world if you're empowered. So I'm really good at Excel spreadsheets. I really have a loud mouth. I'm going to sit with the world leaders right now. I will tell them, but I want UNESCO and UNICEF and Global Partnership for Education and UNHCR because you have a lot of kids in camps and dislocated and displaced. I want you to listen to Sheikh Moza. Education above all. Mean it. Thank you very much.